Banjoholics, how are you doing? Today I want to show you how to paint the Shadow of the Beast and screen. Now before I start, let me tell you what's going on. So I usually prep all my uh, wood, I'm uh, painting on a piece of wood, all my wood uh, with white and uh, this one included, but what happens usually when I finish a painting and I've left over paint is I use that paint to create patterns on another piece of wood. So here I've used some brown and yellow and some leftover white just to create that effect, some bit of a leathery effect and I thought I could paint over it, but um, I didn't find anything interesting to paint with it. So I'm actually going to use that as a base uh, for my Shadow of the Beast painting but it's not entirely lost either I'm gonna apply paint over it but some of the elements are still gonna be um, uh, showing through that first layer and the uh, subsequent layers and what's gonna happen is it's gonna create a much more interesting background and texture uh, to paint over now, it might look I'm actually just covering everything but um, some of it is still uh, showing through even after three layers of paint so it just makes things more interesting in the long run it's also a good technique to uh, use if you uh, if you have the, the blank canvas sort of syndrome and you don't know what to do or where to start from just create a mixed background like that uh, by mixing colors and, uh, and and things will sort of start appearing but here I'm, I'm creating my background so usually the the sky um, in that scene is sort of lighter on the ground and, and darker uh, up above uh, and it just creates that sort of dark mist as opposed to um, white fog. You sort of get that kind of dark mist kind of falling over the uh, over the, uh, the trees. And so I'm setting up my background and uh, now it's time to start on the, uh, the first layer of trees. So I'm using uh, as with mountains and anything else. I'm using uh, um, my base color and just darkening it uh, slightly. I'm actually um, just testing as well as I go along. So I'm... Um, uh, I made a, a first attempt, I wasn't happy with that, so I, I uh, used a darker color in another area. Um, I will actually go over some of it again, if I find uh, some of the colors are too dark, you can always lighten them. But um, that's essentially what I'm doing, just building uh, my layers of trees. Um, in no particular order here, I'm actually um, just trying to see if I can actually correct stuff uh, uh, after I've put a few layers, uh, if I can go back and, and uh, add the extra layers. So here I'm just drawing the outlines and uh, just darkening each layer as, uh, as I, I move to the foreground. And uh, trees are actually kind of hard to paint, I find. It's hard to get a, a nice organic looking tree. Um, luckily, uh, in the original paintings, they're not organic looking tree. They're actually very, very, uh, very weird and evil looking and, and uh, foreboding and just not friendly um, in any way. But um, I'm also redarkening the uh, the top here as if the leaves were sort of blending with the uh, with the uh, the mist, and it just uh, it actually just um, shuts down the scene to those few center elements, uh, namely the the center of the piece where we sort of have a mystery figure, and I don't know if it's a, an artifact of the original painting, or uh, or it was intended to be there. And, uh, and the uh, skeleton of your uh, character that's going to be on the bottom right. So um, I, I'm just using what coat of paint for, for each tree here. And I, I haven't detailed anything. Um, I haven't uh, really created highlights. And uh, I, I'm not worried too much about having a, a uniform um, layer of paint for each tree. Um, you know, it, it's farm for a uniform um, or homogeneous. And... Uh, kind of like it like that it, it just creates it creates small holes and groove and highlight points and anchors for um for details that um, uh, you just wouldn't have if you if you had a flat opaque uh, layer of paint so now it's time to start on the um, small details on the trees and again I'm not gonna detail it very much just a few highlights here and there um, the, the trees are not the emphasis here uh, of the final piece that's going to be that skeleton um, and the uh, the line between that figure in the middle and the eye of the skeleton is, is really your selling center point of the piece um, and everything is done in the composition to focus the eye onto that so the, the, the top is darkened and you see on the bottom um, left I have a darker area just to um, to actually draw the, uh, the line from the top um, down around and into the uh, the the nose of that uh, skull of your character 
so it just it, everything in the painting or in the composition just drives the eye around back to the uh, back to that skull and that center area. Uh, it's not my uh, my own composition, obviously, and I, but it, it, that's uh, that's how the original composition worked. Um, so here I'm starting on the skull and I'm just painting with white, um, the outline with white because it, it's a bit more forgiving. Um, I find if I make a mistake, I can actually uh, just go over it. Um, with the uh, same paint as the background paint or actually if it's still fresh you can actually use a tiny bit of water under your brush just to dilute the paint and and, and rub it gently with either your finger or a piece of cloth um, and uh, as I'm uh, as I'm defining uh, my, my, my shapes here I'm just um, drawing the uh, the shadows first and then putting the base color after the shadows um, it just gives me do, putting the shadows first. Just gives me an idea of volume, and and where everything should be. If you put your your first um, base color first, things tend to be just flooded with that same color and flatten, and it's really hard to see what the volumes are. So I use the uh, my shadows um, and dark areas first, um, and sometimes you'll see me doing highlights as well, shadows and highlight, and then I put the uh, the uh, base layer. And, uh, and then I redo the shadows and highlight afterwards because uh, as I put the base layer, some of the areas get painted over. But because you can see them through the, or the, the, um, the base layer <laughs> that I did after, uh, second, um, it's easier to redo. I'm not sure if I'm expressing myself properly, but um, maybe one day I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I'm just refining slowly um, uh, details and uh, making sure my volumes blend properly together and, uh, and and everything looks nice. Make sure when you're doing this as well that you use very, very thin layers of paint. Uh, it'll just allow you to correct mistakes and, and, and in general, just, you know, you don't want to entirely cover the previous layer uh, either uh, you want some of it to um, to still be able to come through the uh, the last layer you put in uh, that's the way I work anyway um, <laughs> and it, it worked for me um, you can see something the interesting that's uh, happening as well as I'm painting is that as I'm refining my detail element um, the background sort of uh, become less relevant or, or less important to the eye uh, but the side effect is that it makes the uh, the small detail we've added that much more significant. Uh, suddenly, there is a, those trees seems to seem to really um, really have a light coming onto their side. Uh, I haven't done anything more to that scene. It's just the fact that I've added one element, that one very detailed element in the piece, sort of has that effect on the brain. It's a very interesting process. Uh, very interesting things to um, to see happen as you're painting. In general, when you have a composition, it's really important to decide which element the eye should be drawn to. So it's it's typically one um, one uh, one element, one center point here, the skull, and a, a second one that is connected to that, if you, if if at all. Um, so in this case, uh, I would say it's that middle clearing uh, area where the eye seems to be looking at. But um, so decide what element is detailed, and everything else should be less detailed than. Uh, that element. If you don't do that, your 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 painting is going to become very very cluttered. Now it, it could be intentional. Um, you, you might want to have everything as detailed as the foreground element, but for for concept painting and for scenes like that, it's it's probably best to have some elements um, left uh, left either blurry or, or less detailed. Um, now it's almost done. I'm just adding a few, um, a few uh, almost pure white highlights on the bones just to make it uh, pop and shine. And uh, that's the uh, piece finished. Uh, thanks for watching.